everyone, it's me, Alex, and everyone's favorite bird, Archie. Well guys, I did it. I bought the new iPhone. Everyone was tagging me when they saw that Apple was releasing a purple iPhone. Everyone was like, oh, it's made for pretty pastel, please. So that was one thing. There are a lot of people asking me to review it. Uh, thing number two is my dad was in need of a new phone. So I tend to give my old phones to my parents. So good excuse to give dad a new phone because my iPhone 8 is in perfect working condition and I don't really believe in buying a new phone simply because Apple launched it and it's cool. I tend to run my phones into the ground. Also, I like to think that I'm not a slave to the Apple gods. So with that, let's unbox this bad boy and put it to the test. So when you open the box, it is very, very satisfying to pull them open. You know, they invested a lot of time and money in making this box open so smoothly. There's the phone there, and right off the bat, that's a beautiful shade of purple. The official name for this color is just purple, but I would consider it to be probably lilac. It's got this sort of glass front to it. Oh, yes, yes, that's my new phone. Do you like it? I guess so. Now. You pull it out of the box. Okay. Are you going to Are you going to Are you going to let me open it? What do you think? Do you like it? Kids these days. Excuse me. Excuse me. Right. Let's take the screen protector off because that's always extremely satisfying. Size-wise, it's a tiny little bit smaller than my iPhone 8. A little bit thinner to hold, although there's no case on this, and I do have a case on this one. Something that I worry about with these very, very smooth, slippery phones is they're very easy to drop. I do, I do find that the thinner they are and the more smooth they are on the edges, the easier they are to drop. And uh, I have had, in the past, a couple of disasters. A couple of disasters, but let's not... Let's not talk about that. In the box, we have, we have a little instruction manual, but let's be honest, all millennials know how to use an iPhone, so we don't really need that. We have a USB charger, some, are they AirPods? No, no, they're, they're, they're the corded ones. They're not the cordless ones. Good to see that you don't have to use an adapter. I do remember the days when you had to buy an adapter specifically for your headphones, but they, oh, welcome. Hello, look, what's this? We have a pair of headphones and we have a charging cable. Now this phone is a wireless charge phone. You can pop it on one of those little wireless magical charging mats and I still do not understand how that works, but science, that's everything in the box. But what we're really here for is the phone. Now I'm gonna pull up the ad because the ad was pretty convincing to get people to buy the phone. Bless you. They highlight some of the key points of the phone. So let's have a look through it and put some of this stuff to the test. Okay, um, good to see that it's still the same annoying alarm that I've been listening to on repeat for the past six years. Okay, so they're showing it fitting into pockets. I guess they're kind of showing that it's ergonomically friendly. It fits into a, a lot of spaces. I am interested to see if it'll fit into the pocket of my jeans. There you go. Satisfying. Ready for action. Is that a Marvel hero? I don't really believe in uh, destroying things for views, so I'm not gonna go crazy on the phone, but I do wanna test some of these claims that Apple makes, you know, like if, if it's ready for action, can it take a beating? I can't believe I'm about to do this. Oh, this, this hurts me. This hurts my soul. Okay, well, it's not dented. <laughs> Doesn't look dented. Okay. It survived the short fall test. Okay, so they're showing it sort of surviving a bit more of a fall now. There's a cat knocking it off a table. I do have a destructive animal right here, so it's another one we can test. Now, if you're still worried about damaging your phone because maybe you are as clumsy as I am, Apple did uh, have the nerve to sell me a transparent phone case for $65. It was an option at the checkout and 
never, never, never would I usually do that, but I did think for the sake of this video and also for the sake of uh, getting a case on it and there not being very many cases available on the market right now, I did decide to splurge and buy it. So let's open it up and see what $65 gets you. Right, so here it is. iPhone 11 clear case. Yep, it is indeed a clear piece of plastic. <laughs> right, so here it is. That's, that's it. It's, uh, it's not flexible. I guess it's like a silicon material. I can't bend it. A lot of these sort of silicon phone cases, you can, you can bend them. It's very sturdy. It's clear plastic. It has a couple of buttons on the side. I don't know how they can justify charging $65 for something like this. Maybe if you drop your phone on the ground, it'll just levitate. So uh, let's put the case on. At least you can see the purple through the case. I did kind of think to myself, what's the point of getting a purple iPhone if you just get a colorful case? So I do like that, but again, no idea what justifies this being $65. Now in the ad, they're showing it being sort of tossed around inside a bag. Maybe someone's running. Uh, you know, I can't really test this one because there's nothing that can make me run unless it's running to be first in line at the buffet. But we'll put it to the test. Looks fine. So now they're showing the camera. There's a girl in a grocery store taking photos and you guys know how much I love taking pictures in grocery stores. The thing about ultra wide mode is it makes things look a lot longer. So uh, people sending unsolicited pics are definitely gonna like this iPhone. Now in this ad, they don't highlight some of the other features of the iPhone camera. It's got a front facing portrait mode, a portrait mode that works on animals. Okay, so we've got both on portrait mode and you can already see that the new iPhone is zoomed out a lot further than what the old one is. The old one is cropped in two times, whereas the new one, I think portrait mode is basically as the usual frame would look. Also the portrait mode on the new phone is way brighter. The iPhone 11 is picking up Archie in portrait mode, whereas on the iPhone 8, it was kind of struggling to pick him up for a little bit there. There's definitely a huge difference with the lighting. Wow, yep, right, okay, there is definitely a huge difference. <laughs> Take a photo with the 11. And with the eight, I've got to come all the way back here to get the same sort of zoom. This is how far back that I had to stand from the perch to get the same crop factor as the 11 got right up close to him. Okay, looking at them, there's a massive difference with that portrait mode. That's insane. There's a huge difference. I'm impressed. So the eight does not have front facing portrait. If you want to take a portrait, it has to be on the back, but on the new one, we have front facing portrait. Hi. Hi, Papa. Okay, front facing portrait definitely works. I am noticing in this picture, it sort of blurred Archie out a little bit, but that's okay. The front facing portrait is great. It's kind of blurred out on my hairline just a little tiny bit, but you're not getting the same problems that you used to get with the old one, where it kind of went, like I made a, a weird, sort of on the edges, sometimes it wouldn't be blurred very nicely. So this looks great. I'm very impressed with the front facing camera. And it's got this monochrome thing. So the claim is that it'll turn your background into a white background so that it looks like you're in a studio. Now I work as a professional photographer, so I'm wondering if this is potentially gonna put me out of business. So I'm in my lounge room. It's very, very messy here. We have our homemade beer set up here. We've got a whole bunch of junk. I've got a shoe shelf and a tripod and everything. So if it does what it claims, it's gonna turn all of that into a pure white background. I'm very interested to see. So Tiasha, can you take a photo of Archie and I? Okay, now I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, so, oh, what a cute photo. <laughs> okay, let's go edit. This one? Okay, so it says natural light and then it goes studio light. Oh yeah, kind of took the warm tones. Oh, oh, oh. The studio light thing makes me pop. I'm like really popping. Okay, let's go. What was that? What did that do? Kind of made everything look a little bit warmer. Contour lights. Oh! Tiaja, look. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, where are you? 
you. Okay, um, that's stage, stage light mono makes it black and white. And then... It did it! <laughs> Holy! <laughs> Witchcraft. Witchcraft, okay. I feel like because I'm wearing white, I kind of sabotaged myself a little bit. Also, doesn't look quite as good as the picture on the website. The picture on the website looks really, really professional. This one, it looks like some bad photoshopping. So maybe what we should do is go play around in different lighting situations. Maybe I'll like change the color of my top or something because maybe it's struggling with that. So it definitely works, but let's try with some different scenarios. There's also a smarter HDR mode, basically meaning that it's gonna help pick up the highlights, the shadows and all this sort of thing on people's faces without disrupting the background. It's gonna give you a really vibrant image and it's automatic now. So HDR, for those of you that don't know, it stands for high dynamic range. It's basically a photography term that means it's kind of like a merging of photographs. So if you did it on a DSLR camera, the old school way before there was an automatic mode that would do it for you, old school was to oversaturate a photo so it was really, really white, which means that the shadows became brighter. And then you would undersaturate the photo so that way the highlights weren't too blown out. And then you'd take a mid-range photo. And then in Photoshop, you'd smash them all together so that way the shadows are bright, the highlights are darker and then everything in between is like neutral. This one is supposed to have the smartest HDR. Smart HDR, the easiest form of flattery. And it's got a picture of someone sitting there like smiling and there's a blue sky behind them. It's an overcast day today, so I'm not gonna get a picture like that. But uh, it says the next generation smart HDR. Thanks to machine learning, smart HDR is more intelligent than ever. It recognizes people and treats them differently from the rest of the shot. So faces have beautiful highlights, shadows, and natural looking skin tones. And that stunning sunset in the background still looks gorgeous. So uh, I don't know about stunning sunset, but we'll work with what we've got. Yeah, there's a big difference. You can see on my face, my face doesn't have the shadows on the, on the new phone. Even my hair looks more vibrant on the new phone compared to the old phone. The greenery looks really different too. The clouds though, the clouds are kind of similar. I think that there is more definition in the sky on the new phone as well. So it's not perfect, but it's working. I feel like if there was a sunset behind me, it would be a lot nicer. But so I'm gonna give the HDR mode a pass and say that it works for sure. And it's definitely better than the old one. Now they're showing that the phone can handle a few drops of water. And uh, luckily for me, I know someone that can definitely help with this test. Now, this is a really, really big claim. Here they are showing just how water resistant it is. This phone is supposed to be water resistant for two meters for up to 30 minutes. Now, that's not something that I would ever really, really want to try. I've owned phones that are water resistant in the past but never actually put it to the test. But there's a first time for everything. Today, I'm going to be spilling the tea on the new iPhone 11. I can't believe I just did that. I'm disappointed in myself. <laughs> I've never once, out of all the phones that I've ever had, ever got a phone of mine wet, never. <laughs> but it's 
It's fine. I mean, I, I guess exactly like they say, it, it's water resistant. The only thing that concerns me, because most of it's really, really sealed, like all around it seems sealed, but the only thing is on the back camera here, there's a teeny tiny little microphone and I do worry about that getting wet. Like what happens if liquid gets in there? I mean, I guess they wouldn't advertise it as water resistant if it was gonna destroy the microphone, but that does kind of concern me. Like it looks a bit wet. But aside from that, I mean, the, the screen's still working and everything. I guess if you have any little accidents and you spill something on your phone, you're gonna be okay. <laughs> now it says on the website that when you zoom in while you're recording, the audio will zoom in too. What does it mean? Let's test it. So apparently when you zoom in, the audio is supposed to zoom in with the camera. So Tiasha's zooming in on me right now. I have no idea if the audio is going to suddenly get louder for you or what, but I'm talking at the same level that I was talking before. How's the video itself looking? Do you think it looks nice and crispy? It's beautiful. It's beautiful, is it? Is that just just because of my mind in it? Is that why? You know it! Now there's also slow-mo selfies or slow fees as they've coined it. The front facing camera is supposed to be 12 megapixels and you're supposed to be able to take selfies in slow motion. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that. Actually, no, wait, I do know. Archie. Face ID. It's supposed to have the fastest face ID so far. Let's see how that works. Okay, so let's set up face ID. Set up face ID. Move your head in a circle to show all the angles of your face. Oh God, I don't want to show you guys that. This is my good side. This is the side I normally show on YouTube. You're gonna see the dark side. Oh boy, move, move your head slowly to complete the circle. Uh, don't look. <laughs> First face ID scan complete. <coughs> face ID is now set up. Okay. If I lock the screen and then look at it. <coughs> Hang on, is the screen, is it supposed to? <coughs> oh, okay, there's a little padlock on the screen. Okay, looks like it works. Do you want to give it a try, Tiasha? Yes. There's a padlock. Swipe up to unlock. It won't let me swipe up. <laughs> okay, cool. I am Alex! <laughs> yeah, I swear! <laughs> Hello, Papa. Hello, Papa. Hello. In addition to continuously learning how you look, Face ID can recognize an alternative appearance. It's also showing on the ad that it's got the fastest chip in a smartphone. Until they launch Skyrim on a mobile phone, I'm not gonna become a phone gamer. So I can't really put that one to the test for you guys, but let's just believe the ad. It's also showing night mode. It does look really, really epic. It does look really good, the night mode. It looks like it takes some really nice low light photos. So let's put that to the test. And last but not least, it's showing that the phone has all day battery life. Okay guys, so in terms of battery life, it is now 8.46 p.m. I have been using this phone all day. I took it out of the box early this morning and switched it on. I haven't put it on charge at all today. So I even had a time lapse running for maybe half an hour to an hour. I can't remember how long it was. I set it to record while Dan, Sam and I were eating dinner and then I just left the phone outside looking at some candles burning and they were burning for a very, very long time. I think that it may have even been about an hour that it was out on the balcony. And even still, we have 13% battery life. And when I switched it on, it didn't have 100%. It had about 80% battery life. So battery gets an A plus from me so far. So that's it guys. If you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on the notification bell so you know when I post new videos. Follow me on Instagram, it's pretty pastel please. If you like the whole um, tech review thing, this is new for my channel. If you liked it and you want me to review any other products, let me know. I, I don't mind investing for the sake of a video and showing you guys how things work. It is a lot of fun to play around with new products, especially new products with such 
interesting camera options. Leave a comment below and tell me if you are a slave to Apple. <laughs> How often do you buy new iPhones? Do you get one every time that it launches? Do you run your iPhone into the ground like I would normally do? So anyway, with that, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mwah!